Hi, this is Discrete Math Section 8.6, Cobweb Diagram. So this is going to be an interesting little technology item that with the advent of the graphing calculator came about. Uh, I guess these were available previous to that, but it's just made so much easier with the graphing calculator. So I want you to start off and do these first three problems and then try to find the closed form for the sequence. So go ahead and pause and see if you can recognize what type of sequences these are find the four terms, and then the closed form. So now that you've finished, you can go ahead and check your answers. But this one's arithmetic, and so I use the arithmetic formula, plug in the pieces as I know them. I guess this wore out here. Okay, so, and then this one's geometric, because my ratio is 0.5, and I can plug this in, and there's my formula for the uh, closed form. This one's a little bit trickier, but as you know, this is the closed form for a mixed recursion. I got mixed multiplication and addition on there. So you got to find the fixed point, and then you got to plug it into this formula. Okay, fixed point is P, and T1 is your first term, and A is 3. Remember, we take the A from this multiplier right here. Okay, so now we want to get into a visual of a recursion relation. Now what happens with this recursion, and you've been doing it many times, but really you're plugging in a number, getting a new number out. When you get that new number out, you put it back in as kind of an x-coordinate. And so that's what we're going to do as a visual. We're going to do something that's called a cobweb diagram or a web diagram. Okay, so what you do is you go to your calculator, get it into sequence mode, and type this in, u of n and u of 1. So I have that here in my calculator. So you go y equals, if you're in sequence mode, this is what shows up. So type that in right now, pause this and do that. You gotta play along, otherwise you're not gonna get this. And if I go to the table here, then you can see what values I get. And so you can plug that into your chart. So you have to try this on your calculator. Don't just sit here and watch me pause this and get it in. Now the next step, as it says into your uh, things here, we want to get a visual of this, what's going on. So we're going to do a cobweb attractor and show what happens. And not all our attractors, but we'll see how this works. So, first of all, you type this into your y equals. Then you can go ahead and go to second format in the graphing menu and set to web. And so if I look at that on my calculator, I go second format, which is this, and there's something up here that's called web. So you can slide over to that and highlight that. And once you do, then you can go to the graph. I got my window set up here. Why don't you go and set up your window, pause this anytime you have to, so you get this, but you gotta get this picture going. And so those are the values. So I cut off my negative x's and y's, and then I'm going to 20 and 30. Now if I go ahead and graph this, I'm going to get this picture here. Now on my instructions, it says um, set to web and then graph. But after that, what we want to do is we want to try to trace and do a right arrow and see what happens. So what we're going to do is we're going to push trace here. And that's at n equal to 1. And so now if I do the right arrow, what it did was it took my thir uh, x equal to 3 and it went up to my curve here. This curve is actually this equation here. Now I have another equation here, and it doesn't look like it because my window's off a little bit. But this is y equal to x. And so first of all, I went over here. And I went up to the value here. So at th uh, 3, I'm sorry, n equal to 2, I get an x-coordinate of 3. Then it says my y-coordinate is 5. Let's see what happens with this. If I go right arrow, now it goes to the line y equal to x, so that both the x and the y are the same. So I had 3, 5 here just a minute ago, which meant that when I plug in 3, I'm going to get out 5. Then I slide over to the y equal to x, that switches my x value to be the same as the previous y value that we had. So if I go right arrow, now it goes up to my curve. So it says that I went from the 5 to the 9. 
I get out this value 9. So what's going to happen is that I'm going to take that value 9 and plug it into my next sequence. So if I do this to the right again, I got 9, 9. That means that I'm taking x and I'm going to go up to the curve now. And I'm just switching that 9, plugging it into my equation, I'm getting out 17. So this y equal to x line, all it does is switch your x coordinate and turn it into your y coordinate. Or should I say, no, I said that wrong. Sorry, your y coordinate and turns it into your new x coordinate. Because you're plugging in a number, getting a new one out, which would be your y. And then you're taking that y and turning it into x and plugging it back in again. So that's what this cobweb diagram does. Now for some of these, they just go off to infinity. And this one, you can tell, goes off to infinity and keeps on going. Other ones, though, they do what we call attract. So let's see if we can find an example of that and see where they go to one specific value rather than going off to infinity. I guess before we do that, answer these questions. Why do we have the y equal to x? Why does it help us? Well, hopefully you figured that out. Switch x and y, yeah? And why do we go horizontal and vertical? Because what happens is that we take the y value that we're getting out and we're switching it over to our new x value. Then we go up to the curve to find out what the new y value will be and keep that process going. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Okay, so uh, why don't you start with this one. See if you can get this into the uh, y equals, which is now the u of n. Put this in with a k, so you got to do the alpha k, and put this one in as well. And I'd start at, um, the first term should be at 1, or the first term will be 1. I didn't say that right. It's located at 1. And then um, what we'll do is I'll show you how to store this into k, but get this window set up as well. So for instance, I have this already done. So I got y equals, and there's what I have in there, and then set up your window as well to make sure that it corresponds with the values on that sheet there okay so try that and then and then pause and then we'll get you going okay now it does say to take 2.9 and store it in so go to your home screen second quit and go 2.9 and you're going to do the store button right here and you're going to store this into alpha k k is right there Okay, so that's where we get that. If you're having trouble with these buttons, remember that the U button is second seven, and then the N is here when you're in sequence mode. Okay, so now this is the value that's in for K. Now if we try to graph this according to my window that I set up and you set up, it looks like a nice window for us. Now we do have this set up as a web again, so make sure that that's coming through. So we go second format, yeah, it says web, good. So I go to my graph. Now what happens is that I want to do my uh, trace, and then I'm going to do my right arrow. So let's watch what happens with this one. And so we just keep on going. So it's zipping over and then up. So I get out one value, and I turn that over to the x value, and then I plug that in. There it is. So this here is my new y value. Then I'm going to slide over and turn that into my new x value. Then I'm going to take this x value and plug it into the curve. That's what we're doing over and over. Hopefully you can understand that and see that. Now watch what happens when we do this. Oh, it comes back. Oh, well, that's interesting. And now if I keep on doing this, what does it appear to be doing? Well, I think pretty soon it's going to zero in on that point. Now, we can't see it anymore, but it really appears that this point in here was the intersection of y equal to x and then this parabola-looking thing here that we have. And so that's what it's doing. It's finding that point that we end up with. Okay, And what we want to do is try to find out what it gets closer to you might want to play with this and keep on going until you get it really accurate, but that's the idea of that. And that is an attractor. That goes to one single point. Unlike the first one that we did that went off to infinity. Okay? So now it says go change k to 3.44 and then see what happens. And then 3.54 and see what happens. 
and I want you to summarize both of those and I'll check those in class next time. Okay, so I hope you enjoy this. We'll talk about this and then this is your homework for in class. Try number seven if you have time. I'm going to assume since you have most of the class to work, you're going to have time for number seven. All right, thank you.